everyone, this is Dr. Chow from AI Web3. Today I'm so glad to get Soraya from uh, Web3 Foundation. Uh, so we're going to have some short conversation. <laughs> okay, yeah, very so close. Could you please introduce yourself a little bit and uh, uh, any projects you are working on? No. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, my name is uh, Soraya. I'm, I'm with the ecosystem development team at the Web3 Foundation. And uh, what that means is we, we run a bunch of uh, funding initiatives, so mainly the Decentralized Futures Program, uh, the Open Source Grants Program that has been around for more than five years, and also we do a lot of the operations behind the Jam Prize. Why you come to Polkadot Decoded? Yeah, uh, I came to Polkadot Decoded because I'm just a replacement, actually. <laughs> because, <laughs> okay. <laughs> because Fabi, the... Um, the CEO of the Web3 Foundation. Unfortunately, uh, uh, he had some other very urgent things um, he had to do. So I was nearby, so they decided to send me. But I mean, good for me because it's, it's really fun here. Yeah, yeah. okay, that's yeah. nice. It, it, and it, so yeah. I gave a talk also in the morning uh, about the future of funding on Polkadot. So if you haven't seen that, you can watch it on YouTube. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. We would like to. Uh, so if you can have a cup of coffee with uh, some big guy in Web3, who would be the guy? I guess it's not Fabian, right? He didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it would, would be Fabi. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. No, I'm kidding. No, no. Fabi is a really good guy. No, I think uh, because I already had a cup of coffee with him, uh, second on my list, uh, probably the most interesting person right now would be Donald Trump. Yeah, that would be interesting, right? He's very eager, at least that's what he's saying. But if, if um, yeah, he can deliver on what he's uh, promising, then I think he would be an interesting person to have a cup of coffee with. Coffee with. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your favorite blockchain application? Yeah, I do like DeFi. DeFi is interesting. The question is about like mass adoption. Like, uh, which one do you think will reach, will achieve the mass adoption? Do you think DeFi would be the one or some other? Oh, oh I think DeFi is more niche, to be honest. Um, maybe gaming could Game be the five. one because it's, it's kind of the lowest hanging fruit when you think of, mm -hmm. uh, of the fact that all the games, they're already right. virtual, right? You mm -hmm. don't have to uh, tokenize any real world assets and, and try to figure out how to link them to the digital world. But everything is already digital, so you just have to tokenize the digital thing, which is way easier than tokenizing something uh, physically, right? Oh, like, a, like a treasury or a real estate or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe gaming. Okay, yeah. great, okay. And um, so if I talk about Decoded Asia, you are lucky enough, some you, someone give, give to you 10 dots, 10 dot token. What do you want to do with that? The, uh, with 10 dot, I, I think I would just stake it. Yeah, on the, on the staking pool, on, staking on the staking pool. dashboard, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the most exciting thing about Polkadot uh, this year for you? Uh, I believe the Agile core time that is going to be launched uh, within days from now, I guess, is the most promising change to Polkadot this year. Um, mostly because it's gonna lower the barriers of entry significantly so it's going to be much easier um, for smaller builders, builders also to to build on Polkadot yeah what is the role of web3 foundation uh, in Polkadot eco <laughs> i think the main purpose of the web3 foundation is to make sure that the ecosystem develops to maturity so it can reach mass adoption and in particular what we're doing right now uh, we, we are doing a lot of research. So most of the research behind Polkadot technology comes from the Web3 Foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do different funding initiatives to, to incentivize actors, bring more value to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we also have the treasury that, that has a lot of funds, right? That, mm -hmm. that has this role as, as well. But we are trying to support the ecosystem uh, where the treasury is limited to do that, right? So right. this can be due, due to um, confidentiality or other reasons um, between the contract uh, partners. Um, yeah, and also technical education. 
is uh, another main role that the Web3 Foundation provides. Great. So how does Web3 Foundation prioritize the, which project to support? Yeah, so of course, uh, the track record of the team is one important aspect. Another impo important aspect is um, whether what they want to build makes overall sense, but also whether right now there is a, a need for it and um, if it's justifiable to fund them. Uh, and last but not least, also if the cost of executing the project is reasonable, of course. Yeah, we have to be economical all the time. Right. Yeah. So for the uh, related to the mass adoption, like uh, what, uh, what do you think is the current challenge, and uh, did you have a plan um, for mass adoption in Baghdad? We we will need some actors to build the next layer, mm -hmm. uh, because right now uh, what we have is kind of the infrastructure layer, right? Mm -hmm. That that allows you to build your own layer one, uh, but those layer ones, they haven't really reached mass adoption yet, right? So, right. so we need more builders to, to build the, the next layer mm -hmm. of the network mm -hmm. that can reach mass adoption. But we have also a couple of really interesting innovations. For example, I, I think that the fact that the asset hub, the Polkadot asset hub, Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. that uh, supports sufficient assets, mm -hmm. meaning with your USDT or USDC stablecoin, you can use the same token to pay the transaction fee and you don't need the underlying asset. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very uh, attractive for mass adoption. Mm -hmm. and, the, and also the fact that it's completely decentralized and trustless. Mm -hmm adds to, to the value a lot. So I think that's very unique. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I know we have a snow bridge, hyper bridge, right? Um, do we actually have a plan to work with uh, the project even outside of Polkadot? Because mass adoption, right? Uh, uh, that, that there are some other projects who had a lot of users and uh, um, yeah, and with the trustless bridge we have built, uh, I think it's, it's probably very useful or important if we can get them to Polkadot and the building in Polkadot. Do you have any plan? Um, right, uh, yeah, you, noted, uh, you mentioned uh, an important point, right? These trustless bridges mm -hmm. uh, like Beefy and, and Snowbridge, but also maybe the upcoming Hyperbridge, they allow interoperability outside of our ecosystem. And Hyperbridge, I believe, goes even one step further than Ethereum, and they, they're gonna bridge to a lot of more different uh, ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good thing because Polkadot was built with interoperability in mind. And we currently we do have interoperability. So Polkadot 1.0 has been delivered, but it's kind of only within the ecosystem, right? Yeah. Within the Polkadot network. Yeah. So the next uh, step will be to, to bring it to other chains and ecosystems as well. Sure. So, so we can have Mm -hmm. Interchain, inter, um, inter ecosystem mm -hmm. interoperability. Right, right, that's right. a lot of inter. What do you think will be the first large scale application in Polkadot? A couple of names come to mind right now. So, uh, Mythical, they had like over 3 million transactions on the first day, right? And I think they, today they're going to make an announcement of, of another partnership. So, uh, there's much more in the pipeline there. Um, then, Another project, maybe Peak. Mm -hmm. I think they have seen a lot of traction. Um, yeah, those are two of the most recent one, recent ones. So yeah, maybe one of those two. But uh, I'm sure a lot more are yet to come because we we're only just getting started uh, with some initiatives like mm -hmm. the ecosystem uh, funds. Mm -hmm. So. I believe there are a lot of more um, good projects coming. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, the last question, like, uh, um, did you have any message you want to send to the Polkadot Decoded participants? Yeah, for the Polkadot Decoded Asia participants, right? Um, I think uh, just stay tuned because 
there's much more to come. So the community is going to be much more active in China. We have uh, different initiatives also funded through the DF program in China and, and also in Korea and Japan and also for Southeast Asia. So we are having a lot of uh, upcoming events, uh, local meetups, more large scale events as well, Sub-Zero in Bangkok, uh, in two months. Um, a lot more is to come, so uh, stay tuned and and come over to the next event. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, come, yeah. Okay. come meet us at uh, <laughs> Decoded and Sub-Zero. What is it? Sub-Zero Reset, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sub-Zero yeah. Reset. Oh, yeah. Actually, I do have one, one more thing. So, sure. yeah, and last but not least, uh, I recommend to come to Sub-Zero Reset in November because I'm going to do some graffiti artwork uh, for the first time <laughs> <laughs> at the venue. So, it will be funny to see how that goes. Yeah. So, okay. come meet us there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so yeah, much. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Saraya. Okay. Thanks.